Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's audition workshop. I am Shana Ferraro, the Community Programs Director for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. And I am Paula Fukuhara, the Fine Arts Administrative Assistant for Texas Center for Arts and Academics. And we're going to tell you all about auditions. Today's workshop will help you to know what needs to be done before auditions and then what to expect on the day of your audition. Our open enrollment dates are January 13th until February 15th. Now we're going to go over how to prepare and where to find all of the information. Everything we talk about today is easy to find on our website. We will take you through each step so you will know exactly where to look. Start by going to artsacademics.org. Then click on the Admissions tab in the top right corner. One note to point out on this top of the page is the opportunity to sign up for a campus tour if you have not done so already. Then you can scroll down on the page and click Start Your FWAFA Journey. Now you will be on the page with everything you need to prepare for auditions. First, start by finding the audition requirements that apply to you. We have them organized by art form. For students auditioning for third through sixth grades, you will need to select two areas for them to audition in. For seventh through eighth grade, you can either audition in one or two areas. And for 9th through 12th grade, you are only able to audition in one area. If you are not sure which fine art your student should audition for, going through these documents to see the requirements will help you to make that decision. We will start by showing you an example from the dance requirements. Here you can see this portion applies to all students auditioning in dance grades 3rd through 12th. It will talk about space needed, what to wear, and how the student will be evaluated. On the next sheet, you can see that it becomes more specific. Students auditioning for third through six will learn ballet combinations and traveling sequences, but do not need to have anything choreographed or learned in advance. Grades seven through 12 will learn ballet, jazz, and modern contemporary combinations. All of these will be taught through the audition instructional videos that you receive during your audition time. There are also requirements for the 9th through 12th graders to prepare a self-choreographed solo. The next sheet shows an example of a score sheet that the adjudicators will use to score the videos you submit. The rubric gives details about how they will determine what score is given. Paula will now take you through some of the theater and visual art examples. Thank you, Shana. Similar to the dance section, the theater section also starts off explaining what space is needed, what to wear, and how the student will be evaluated. This example is specific to grades 7 through 12 and shows you that they will have certain tasks to complete. In the colored boxes, you can see task 1 is a monologue, task 2 is a cold reading, and task 3 is improvisation. This slide talks more in detail regarding the monologue performance and requirements for both 7th and 8th grade, as well as 9th through 12th grade. At the bottom, you will see task 2 and task 3 are the same, grade, same for grades 7th through 12th. This slide shows an example of a score sheet that the adjudicators will use to score the videos you submit. Here you will find the rubric which gives details about how they will determine what score is given. Here we come to the visual arts section. This document applies to grades 3rd through 12th. You can see it lists task 1 as a still life drawing. It will give you direction on how to set up a still life and what supplies you will need. On this slide, you will find the 7th through 12th audition score sheet. This is used by the adjudicators to score the videos you submit. Lastly, you will see the visual arts rubric. This is used as a guide by the adjudicators to determine what score is given. Now Shana will give you more information about our choir audition. 
Thank you, Paula. Here is an example of the third through sixth grade choir requirements. You will notice it talks about having a song prepared in advance. Sample songs that you can use are found back on the same page of our website as this document here. Here is a sample choir score sheet. And again, the rubric helps you to know what will be required to earn each score in the audition. All of these documents that Paula and I have gone through are located on the website and will help you to know what to expect from your audition. The audition itself will be given to you in the form of an audition instructional video for each fine art area. These videos are made by the same instructors who would have hosted the audition in person. This way, they are able to still talk to you throughout the process and demonstrate if needed. Here is one example of how you might receive an instructional video. This document will give you a few notes as well as provide the link to the video and the playlist that is needed for when you record your video. In this example, the department put together a slideshow with details and some of the slides include links to videos for you to click on. No matter what, we encourage you to read through everything and watch every video beginning to end and do not rush. Each audition will contain multiple parts. Although you will have a designated amount of time, it will be enough for you to go through the whole process and not miss anything. Another great resource back on this page on our website, down at the bottom, is our list of accepted ISDs. Your home address needs to be inside one of these in order for you to apply to FWAFA. Speaking of that application that you will turn in during our open enrollment period, which remember is January 13th until February 15th. Once we receive your application, you will be assigned a specific day and time for each audition. And even though it is online, it will be during that day and time that you will be given access to your audition instructional videos. At that same time, you will be given an audition number. From that point on, all communication will be using the audition number and not the applicant's name. This will be most important when labeling and submitting your videos. Each audition will be given a designated start time, which is when you will gain access to your instructional videos, as well as an end time, which is when you will need to have your video submitted by. I'm now going to let Paula take you through what will happen during those times. Thank you, Shana. These are the steps you will take to access your instructional videos. First, you will receive a Google Classroom invite in your inbox from me. It will look like this. Now click join. You will then see this screen. It's the home page of the Google Classroom. You will see an assignment already posted in your classroom stream. If you click classwork at the top of the page, you will be directed to this screen. Now click view assignment. Here you will be able to actually open the document that contains the instructional video. Once you click this document, video or PowerPoint, you will see another window open with the instructional video. This is when you will start going through your audition process. All the audition information and links will be found here. And just remember, this is a sample so your assignment will look slightly different from this. Go back to the screen after completing your audition using the instructional video and upload the audition videos as unlisted on YouTube. Here's where you need to upload a YouTube link of your audition video. Speaking of YouTube, let me show you how to do this. Step one is creating a YouTube channel. Step two is how to upload your video as unlisted. This is the home screen 
of YouTube. In the top right, you can see a little video camera icon. Click that and a drop down will become available. Now click Upload Video. If you do not have a YouTube account already, it will lead you to this screen, the How to Create a Channel screen. You will need to select one of the two options listed. I have decided to use a custom name. That will then bring you to this screen where you can insert a name for your channel. Feel free to name your channel whatever you would like. Be sure to click the checkbox below your name and then click Create. This screen now shows your channel is created on YouTube. It will lead you to this screen, which shows your channel information and videos. Now it's time to click Create, then Upload Video. It will pop up with this box where you can click Select Files. Then a dialog box will open and you can find your file on your computer. As you can see, my video is labeled Audition Number 0, Grade 3 which is how you will need to label all of your files. If you have more than one video, then at the end of the title, you put a comma, video one, comma two, comma three, etc. Most auditions will require more than one video. For now, if you have multiple videos, only do one at a time. Now you can click open. You will then come to this screen. It is important you keep the file name the same as you originally named it in the beginning. Click Next. This screen will pop up and you can just click Next. Here's where you would choose to upload your video as unlisted. This is important because this means no one else has access to your video unless you share it with them. Then click Save. Now your video is posted and you can now copy the video link at the bottom of this box. This is the link I will now show you how to upload to your Google Classroom. Once you click close, it will lead you here. Now you will see your video posted on your channel. Now you will want to go back to the Google Classroom. Click add or create in the your work box at the top right. A drop down menu will appear and you will want to click link. This is where copying the video link from YouTube comes in handy. You will need to paste the link and then click add link. Now you will see your video link in the your work box. If you have more than one video, repeat that step until you see all of your videos in your work box. You will follow the same pattern as we did when uploading the first video. Once you have uploaded all of your videos, you will want to click Turn In. Before clicking Turn In, you will want to verify all of your videos are titled correctly. This is the last chance to get it right. And once you're ready, click Turn In. It will want you to verify that you are really ready. If so, click Turn In again. You will see the Your, your Work box marked as Turned In in the top right to confirm you have in fact turned in your assignment. And now Shana is gonna take you through a few tips and tricks on how to record a successful audition video. Thank you, Paula. That was really helpful information. I want to give everyone a few tips and tricks to help you record the best video possible for your student. We know you will not be able to have the perfect filming setup, and please know that will not affect the score at all. But we would love to help you make sure that we are able to see all that your student has to offer. Try to plan for a calm and quiet house. Pick a location in the house that provides you with the space and lighting that you need. Decide in advance who will be in charge of filming and who will be able to create your YouTube link that Paula spoke about. Know which devices you will use to film, which one will play the video, and if you need an additional one to play music or not. Many times you cannot play music from a device at the same time you are using it to film. You will be able to go through this video and the screenshots of Paula explaining how to create an unlisted YouTube link. Or you can watch a tutorial video that we have on our website. 
Either way, we suggest you make a practice video ahead of time to give you an idea of the process and also how long it takes. Downloading the videos can sometimes take up to 30 minutes. This is the link on our website to the tutorial video. And just another reminder that you will only want to use the student's audition number and not their names when labeling your videos to submit. But after that, you can celebrate because your audition will be done. We will send result letters out the third week in March. Thank you for attending our FWAFA audition workshop.